Hi everyone, so today is the 31st of July, which means that we come to the end of our plastic free July. So I'm hoping that you managed to do a few bits and pieces that maybe you downloaded the checklist and you thought a little bit more about um, how you can reduce the amount of plastics that you use in order to kind of, you know, be part of the, the solution collectively. So today I just wanted to talk specifically about microplastics. Now, in regards to plastics, I remember back when in, I think it was 2014, I traveled the world, backpacked with my family, and, and I remember being really shocked at the rubbish and the plastic, not just on the pavement, but in the sea. And I, I specifically had gone to um, Bali and, and being, this is like really romantic, you know what Bali would be like, and I was really shocked at, um, just the plastic that was actually in the sea. And I remember swimming in a few beaches um, alongside plastic bags, pot noodle containers, nappies. And I felt really angry and upset because I was really naive thinking that things had changed. And it made me think about all the sea creatures that have to swim with all this junk all the time. And now I've just been doing some, some research, not just on plastic, but on microplastic. But in regards to plastic, according to recycle.co.nz, there's approximately about 252,000 tonnes of plastic waste disposed of to New Zealand landfills every year. Greenpeace reported that New Zealand exports 98,000 tonnes of just plastic waste. We actually ship it offshore, and that was between um, January 2018 and March 2021. 98,000 tonnes of plastic we actually shipped offshore for other people to deal with. And New Zealand has um, uh, they've done some... Um, Studies that show we throw away an estimated 159 um, grams of plastic waste per person um, every time, which makes us, I think it was actually more than 159, I think it's 159,000 grams of plastic waste per person, um, which makes us some of the highest waste generators in the world. Now, the New Zealand government is promising to phase out problem plastics. Um, mainly single-use plastics is what they're aiming at by July 25, and that, that includes things that are hard, hard to recycle, food and drink packages that are made from um, PVC and polystyrene, or hate polystyrene, and even some degradable plastic products as well, because some of them are not breaking down if you put them into landfill. And then obviously those single use plastic items such as the, those drink straws, cotton buds, um, stirrers, um, obviously single use plastic bags that you get in the, the fruit and veggie aisle, plastic cutlery, plastic plates, bowls, um, and fruit labels that you get on those apples as well that drive me nuts too. So they're looking at phasing all of that, getting rid of all of that by 2025. And the World Wildlife Fund is working towards a vision of no plastic in nature by 2030, which is actually not very far away. Um, and I'm a bit depressed about whether we're actually going to manage it. Which is good. It's good that we've actually got guidelines, we've got deadlines, and people, I think, are actually a lot more switched on now. But obviously, single-use plastics is the thing that we're generally focusing more on. But there's a hidden plastic problem, and that's microplastics and nanoplastics. So microplastics are tiny particles of plastic that are less than five millimeters in size. It's about the size of like a grain of rice. Um, and sometimes they can be the breakdown products of larger plastic weights. And sometimes they've actually been purposefully manufactured, um, especially in textiles and, and the fabric industry. Now, nanoplastics are less than um, a micrometer which means they aren't even visible to our naked eye and they are in our environment. If you can't see them, it makes it really hard to actually deal with it. So why are they a problem? Well, they are too small, both micro and nano plastics, too small to be captured in filtration systems. So they end up in our rivers and our oceans. They then accumulate bacteria and algae, which then makes them really toxic to um, marine animals, fish and birds. And of course they look at them because they think, oh, there's algae on that, that must be food. So then they ate them, but they're toxic. So research have found microplastics in about 114 different marine creatures. They found that the microplastics in particular take up room in the animal's guts um, and they can't poo them out. Um, so in, in particular in, in turtles, they found that the plastic stays in the gut of the turtle 
they give off gas, which then gets trapped inside the turtle, which means the turtle can't dive underwater to get food, so they either starve to death, or because they're floating on the top of, of, of the sea and they can't dive, they then become more vulnerable to predators uh, or even boats because they can't escape. Within fisheries, they found out that out 12 out of 25 important species that, um, that are important for fisheries have been found with microplastics in them. So when we consume fish or crustaceans, we're consuming this toxic material too. They've also found microplastic locked up in Arctic ice. So when the ice melts, it's going to be released into our oceans again. Um, the University of Plymouth in England, they examined the effect of microfibers specifically on marine mussels. And they found that these marine mussels that had microfibers inside of them had damaged DNA, deformed gills and digestive tract. Now they can't prove that it's the microfibers that did the damage, it's just associated because they're present and um, the muscles have these, these, these conditions, these issues, and the microfiber is there, but they can't show that that's actually caused it. Watch this space. Researchers have also um, looked at the other compounds that are found in microplastics or, or compounds that, that microplastics are using, such as um, resins, flame retardants, chemical stabilizers, and more. So a lot of those chemicals that are found within microplastics, we know harm the reproduction in birds and fish. Now, a lot of it's a lot of the studies have not been done on people, they've actually been done on animals. But we can kind of to some extent think, well, if if there's you know reproductive issues and gut issues in these creatures that are consuming microplastics, what does that mean for us as humans? We know a lot of the chemicals that are in things like flame retardants, um, resins, and there are the BPA and all these other chemicals, they affect our hormones and therefore can can have a role to play in hormone conditions because they can disrupt the way hormones function in the body. There was um, a study done in 2018 that discovered that actually animals play a role in making things worse. So um, there were researchers that found that in the Antarctic, they looked at krill and when the krill ate microplastics, they, the, the krill basically break down microplastics into nanoplastics and these nanoplastics are so tiny they get into cells um, and the University of Bonn in Germany showed that once they get into the cells the nanoplastics can damage proteins such as our DNA which is not great. So this isn't just happening in our water it's also happening in soil and it's happening with our land animals too. So as humans we are ingesting drinks and food contaminated with micro and nanoparticles. We can be breathing in particles from the outside environment through the air, water and soil, but also plastics in our house, which can give off nanoparticles and gases will be actually inhaling this. We can also absorb nanoparticles from water or you will find there are lots of nanoparticles in health and beauty products as well, which can be impacting our health. We might not know it now, but it is possible that it can impact our health down the line. So they will be in our gut, they will be in our lungs, they will be in our blood circulation. And in our gut, they can break down even more into smaller particles and that's where they tend to accumulate. They're widely used in ingredients like body lotions um, um, and things like, if you look at body lotions, they use urea, glycerol, um, alpha hydroxyl acids. They enhance the ability of nan nanoparticles to actually get through our skin barrier. So as I said, there's been quite a bit of research specifically looking at marine creatures and a little bit on land creatures very limited research on humans lots have been done in a lab looking at cells what they do know from the studies that have been done so far is that these at the, at the very the very least these micro plastics and nanoplastics um, can increase inflammation can cause oxidative stress which is a bit like rust you get rust on the outside that's kind of happening to, to some extent inside of us um which happens naturally but it's increasing the amount of damage that is done from that um these 
nano and microplastics can damage mucin. Now, mucin is like the mucus, which is really important for immunity, um, in, particularly in our respiratory and our gut um, system as well. Um, and it can cause um, damage to our gut lining. It, it could possibly create that leaky gut, for want of a better word, where things pass through the gut into the bloodstream that shouldn't really be there. It can affect um, our bacteria balance as well, causing dysbiosis changes the way we use proteins and the way we use bile and it can affect the, the way the body makes energy so things like certain chemicals that you might have heard of bpa for example there are lots of other types of bp as well chemicals like phthalates um triclosan bisphenone um organotins brominated flame retardants these are chemicals used in lots of different industries and um these are leached from plastics and, and they've been linked to obesity, hormone imbalances, especially thyroid and estrogen um, hormones. They've been linked to cardiovascular disease, fertility, damage to embryos, liver damage, you know, you name it. There's, that inflammation that has come from specific chemicals that can create inflammation and, and block the way our hormones work have all been linked back to these chemicals that, that are leached from plastics in particular. So. Having depressed you, what can you do about it? Let's talk about where you can find microplastics from. So num number one is it that, you know, getting rid of these single use plastics is really, really important because they can break down to these other um, micro particles. So use glass water bottles, use glass coffee cups, use your own fabric shopping bags or cardboard boxes. I love cardboard boxes because a lot of those um, some of those reusable shopping bags are kind of plastic fibers, too, and they don't break down. So use cardboard boxes, take your own containers um, to the shops and put, put stuff in your, in your boxes. So try not to just constantly get these reusable bags because sometimes they're actually not helping either. Take your own containers for takeaways. Don't use straws or plastic cutlery or um, polystyrene containers. I hate them, don't use them. That's like the number one thing to do. Secondly is gym wear. So it's the number one clothing that uses microplastic fibers. So anything that's, um, that's sweat wicking, that's breathable, lightweight, they tend to be petroleum based fabrics. Um, and Newcastle University researchers found that for every wash, these fibers released somewhere between 500,000 and 6 million microfibers per wash, depending on the garment. That's a huge amount of microfibers. So highly recommend if you've got that gym wear you can buy bags called guppy bags or i think there's something called guppy friend in new zealand you put your active wear in the bags they trap the microfibers in the bag which stops them going down the drain into the water which then affects our marine life so if you've got any of that sweat wicking gym wear which you may very well do i know i do use these bags to stop those microplastic fibers getting into our oceans number three personal care products away from anything that has micro beads in um, they're polyethylene so they've been banned from a lot of countries but not all so don't use products that contain polyethylene sometimes it's called pe and um, polypropylene which is pp um nylon and um, there's something called pet polyethylene and um, terephthalate anything with phthalates in anything with polymethyl in the title don't use them and be really careful if you can see anything that's got like micro beads or nano beads do not use them okay they're not good for us and they're not good for the environment sanitary products use a lot of plastic so whether it's your, your tampons or your pads be really careful about what you use because if you think like that you've got the plastic sticky thing that sticks to your pants you've got the plastic containers around the pads uh, and and a lot of them will you know a lot of tampax have got plastic within the tampax for example so or tampons so please be careful with sanitary products there are cups now there are period knickers that are awesome it is tenor tenor lady knickers now for bladder leakage so there's a huge amount of options out there so when you're buying your sanitary products um please have a look to see what you can do to reduce the amount of plastic waste um which is huge i mean you can you can get cloth um, panty liners. Um, I haven't seen them as much as I, the, the, we used to get them in organic shops. So be a bit more discerning about the sanitary products you use. And if you can get something that is reusable, 
um, like your period knickers or cups, then please consider using those. Next thing, tea bags. Most tea bags contain plastic, not all. Um, poly, polypropylene is added to paper bags to give them strength. Silken tea bags are usually made from nylon, the PET or a plastic called PLA. So be really discerning about the tea bags that you get and what the tea bags are made from. Sometimes they use um, kind of specific kind of plastic glues to seal the tea bags as well. So loose leaf tea is best. There's heaps of options for your infusers. That's a really, I mean, I love tea bags, but you know, they are adding to the plastic and the environment. So buy loose leaf tea if you can and use infusers. Cigarettes, so the filters in cigarettes um, contain plastic. Um, it's one of the main things found on beach cleanups. 20% of the crap found on beaches are these uh, cigarette filters. Um, we're now seeing the same thing with e-cigarettes and vapes as well. Cartridges used are plastic. They're a water hazard. The lithium batteries used in e-cigarettes plus the chemicals used for flavorings are all environmental and health hazards. So if you care about the environment, please consider not using e-cigarettes or vapes or cigarettes, please. Take up knitting or something else. It's not gonna be great for your health. It's certainly not gonna be great for the environment. Um, if you've got a microwave, just don't microwave food that's in plastic containers because it's possible that the, what, whatever is in the plastic will leach into the food. Um, as I've said, um, maybe I'll do a talk on, on BPA, but BPA is kind of old hat to some extent. There are actually other bisphenols that are just as bad that just haven't become trendy at the moment and can cause huge amounts of problems too. So got to microwave, just make sure that you microwave in bowls or glass rather than in plastic containers. Use water filters as well. Bottled water contains plastic, and if those plastic water bottles are left out in the sun, the plastics will leach into the water and you'll be drinking that. Um, and number 10, dust and vacuum regularly. And that's in order to minimize the breathing in of plastics. Open up your windows and ventilate when you can. Again, really, really important. Spend time looking at your beauty products, your household products, and start to make tiny changes. Um, I do have, a, it's an environmental toxin audit. Let me know if you want a copy. Um, just put an, um, a comment in, in the comments section and I will get that um, audit to you. It's just a check, not specifically of, of, of plastics, but general um, environmental toxins, just to kind of reduce the load. We can't stop it. We can't, we can't stop the exposure, but we can certainly find out a little bit more about it and we can certainly reduce our exposure by making some changes and it will impact our health as well as the health of the planet. So I hope this has been useful. I hope I haven't scared you too much. Um, there's a lot we can do. Um, so have, have fun with this. Let me know the changes that you make. Um, and thank you for taking part in Plastic Free July. Hopefully we will also do Plastic Free August, September, October, November and December and beyond not just one month so have a fantastic day thank you for listening and i'll see you later